Facebook now. Brilliant. Hi, everybody on, who's joining us on Facebook as well. Welcome. Let us know where you're joining us from today. It's been really encouraging over the last two weeks uh, to just see where everybody's coming from. So we've had people, I wrote a list of where we people have said that they're from, from around the world. So obviously around the UK and Ireland. Uh, also we've had people join us from Albania, Australia, Burundi, Denmark, Germany, Guyana, Hungary, India, New Zealand, Malawi, Norway, Nigeria, Papua New Guinea, South Africa, and Sweden, which is incredible to know that there are so many people uh, joining with us to stop and pray uh, for health services, for our nation, uh, for the globe. So yeah, so please do let us know where you're joining from. It's such a privilege to have you with us um, to be praying for this situation. So for those that haven't been with us before, welcome to COVID-1900 Prayer, uh, a daily devotional and prayer session hosted by the Christian Medical Fellowship. My name is Rachel and I'm Head of Student Ministries at CMF and I'm also a junior doctor in the UK. At this time, so many people who work in healthcare are in need of physical, emotional, and spiritual support. Um, so thanking, thank you for joining us to stop and pray for our nation, for our health service, and for the globe. So we're gonna have a short devotional, and then after that devotional, um, I, we're gonna pray. So let me begin. Today's devotional is based on Doctor's uh, Life Support for today. And you can find if you're joining us on Facebook or Instagram uh, or sorry, or YouTube later on, you, there's a link to the daily devotional uh, in, in the description. So today's reading was from Luke 22 verses 31 to 32. And I'm reading from the NIV version. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. The context of these verses is just before um, Jesus tells Peter that he's going to deny him three times um, uh, after he's been arrested. Here we see Jesus saying, I think, three key things that can help us in this situation. The first is that the enemy, the evil one, he's out there. Um, as we read in verses like 1 Peter 5, 8, he's out there prowling like a lion, waiting to devour people. And when we're under pressure or under stress, we can be more susceptible to, um, to the little whisperings of the evil one. But helpfully in these passages, Jesus reminds Peter that he's praying for him. And like Peter, we need to be reminded that and as we read in Romans 8, 34, which Romans 8 seems to be a key feature of these devotionals um, over the last few days. He, that is Jesus, is at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, praying for us as we face difficulties and challenges that may cause us to falter in our faith. Thirdly, um, he also importantly tells Peter that he is going to learn from this. And he's going to use this experience to help others. In, in this passage, he uses the word strengthen your brothers. I don't know, perhaps this is a biblical mandate for uh, the reflective practice that we all love doing for our portfolios. But more than that, it reminded me of how often God uses difficult situations, hard situations in our life for our good and ultimately for his glory. And we see that echoed in so many verses in the Bible. In, in Romans 5, for example, where we read about suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character and character hope and hope doesn't put us to shame. We see that also in Romans 8, where we learn that all things, that's all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, work together for the good of those that love him and have been called according to his purpose. The great thing about these two verses is actually reading the other side of the incident where we see Peter denying Jesus, denying that he knows him three times. And we can read that in John 21. And here we see Jesus asking him three times, that is Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And each time he rings out a resounding yes, which is so encouraging to see after all that has happened. 
They, these are important principles to be reminded of in a time where we're facing increased stress and pressure. We will fail. The obvious ways that might happen might be in our clinical work, a missed sign or symptom, insufficient resources to help. But it's more than that. It might be the indifference we show to a colleague in the midst of our busyness or a sharp word we share with a family member, perhaps frustrations boiling over in the in the pressure cooker that is isolation with the rest of our family. We may even in this situation falter in our own faith. And when those moments come, we better be sure that the devil, the evil one is prowling, waiting to sow doubt and condemnation in our hearts. Oh, you call yourself a Christian. Look what you said to that person. Look how you treated that person. Call yourself a doctor, call yourself a nurse, call yourself a midwife. You missed that. You could have helped that person. You didn't. When those little voices come, we have to remember that one, there is no condemnation in Christ, as we read in Romans 8.1. We need to remember that his grace is sufficient in all things, as we read in 2 Corinthians 12.19. So let us in this season of difficulties and pressures and challenges and suffering, remember or think about the ways that we might fall and falter. Let us remember our saviour, Jesus Christ, is interceding for us. Let us learn from our failures and use them to encourage and strengthen one another to keep on keeping on. Let us also remember that God can and is using every situation for our good and his glory. And I'm going to read um, the uh, prayer that is at the end of the daily devotional. Again, it links in the uh, description if you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook. Lord, your love and understanding are greater than my failures. You know that I love you despite the mess I have made of things. Lord, forgive the past and help me to live in a way that is more pleasing to you. Amen. So we're now going to, as we do every day, pray uh, in three parts. We're going to pray for our health service. We're going to pray for our nation and we're going to pray for the globe. Uh, some of these prayers that we're praying today have been sent in by people. Um, so they may be health workers in the UK, Christians, people around the world. So if you would like us to pray for something, please do send in uh, your prayer requests to prayer at cmf.org.uk. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for chaplaincy teams across the UK and Ireland. We thank you, God, for those teams and the much needed support they provide to patients at this time. We particularly thank you for chaplains who are also providing much needed support and reassurance to staff working on the front line. We pray for continued strength and wisdom as they undertake this important role. Lord, we pray for our nation. We thank you for how the church has responded in this crisis as it seeks to support people through online services and caring for those in the community. May people that don't know you, Lord, have the opportunity to hear from God's word and come to faith. We thank you for all the community initiatives that are springing up as people are generous with their time, their money and their resources. May we continue to love our neighbour as ourselves long past this current situation. And Lord, we turn to pray for the globe. We pray for Europe today as tens of thousands of people are suffering as a result of COVID. Whether this is with health or socially or economically. Heavenly Father, please be with the country leaders and health and science experts as they tackle this problem. May countries continue to share information and resources. Show them your grace and fill them with wisdom, we pray. Amen. Lord, in this time when the pressure is on, we will fall short of the righteousness you have called us to. Forgive us, Lord, and help us help those of us that follow you to know your grace, to know that your grace is all encompassing, that your mercy is all reaching and that your love is never ending. Help us to learn from the past and use it to bring hope to people for the future. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you so much for joining us uh, to pray today. It's been a pleasure to have you with us wherever you're joining us from the UK, Ireland, around the world. Um, yeah, lots of people joining from um, different places. Uh, Strood, London, thank you so much for having for being with us. Um, there's other places here where people are joining us on Instagram. Uh, we've got uh, Priyana, hey, I know he's joining us from India. We've got Steve from Kent. It's really great to have you with us. So yeah, join us again tomorrow at uh, 7 p.m. We're going to shortly upload this to our YouTube channel. Please feel free to share with friends, uh, colleague, family members. Um, and yeah, we'd also love to hear your prayer requests as well. We also have a well-being team. So if you're a healthcare professional based in the UK, whether you're Christian or not, you can access um, our well-being service. Again, if you're following us on Instagram, look at the link in the bio. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, um, it's in the description below. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, goodbye and God bless. And we'll see you tomorrow.